What do you fundamentally believe about 9-11? What happened that day? I believe that there is a complete lack of accountability and transparency on the official bodies that were tasked to investigate the events. I think that the 9-11 Commission, uh, a lot of family members and a lot of survivors were looking to the 9-11 Commission for closure. They went into those hearings expecting answers, as you just heard Bob McElvain say up there. He wanted answers from the Commission. He went in there expecting things to finally make sense, and they didn't. And, uh, you know, I think it's the complete lack of accountability on the part of the government that has led to the formation of the truth movement and is why, you know, people like me and Corey and everyone here continue to do what they do is because we're pretty much doing what the government didn't do, which is properly investigate and look into the events of September 11th, who truly stood to benefit from it, and why we're still living in the repercussions. Do you believe the U.S. government murdered American citizens on 9 11? You know, I think that's a loaded question uh, because, you know, the U.S. government involves the post office. So I don't think that. So, I mean, let me phrase it a different way then. Do you believe elements of the U.S. government murdered American citizens? I believe that it's highly possible that there were definitely elements within the Bush administration that either were criminally negligent or criminally complicit in the events. Complicit, you mean they allowed the killing of innocent Americans? One way or another, they allowed the killing of innocent Americans. The only question is how responsible they were for it. Why would they do that? Why wouldn't they? Well, I mean, do you have a reason for it? Do you have a motivation? Well, look at everything that the American government has done in the name of fighting terror. Look at the foreign wars we launched. Look at everything that's been done in the name of preventing another attack like that and ask yourself if any of it could have been done on September 10th. We're still living in the post-9-11 era, and we're still doing whatever we want because of it. Um, let me uh, ask you, Corey, what, what do you fundamentally believe about that day? I fundamentally believe that there is a huge problem. Uh, as a veteran who served in both Afghanistan and Iraq for our country, um, and to see my brothers and my fellow soldiers die overseas over misconstrued information, straight up lies, and disinformation that's been put out to the American public to, to, pu to push a war that is, you know, on every, on every level illegal, built on lies. And the fact that you say, would the American government kill innocent Americans, they do it every day. They send soldiers to war every single day to fight a war that was built on lies. So they kill American soldiers every day that we stay in Afghanistan and Iraq for the reasons that the Bush administration placed us there. Of course, soldiers die in the war, soldiers go to war. Do you believe elements of the American government were complicit in killing innocent civilians? Yes, I do. The, the, the history behind it, there's so many instances of our, of our government, you know, experiment, experimenting on civilians, using civilians for, for whatever their means are. I mean, throughout history, not only Americans' history, but throughout other countries' history, there has been uh, instance after instance of, our, of governments using and killing their own civilians. So let me get this straight. You think elements of the U.S. government were complicit in... Slaughtering are you trying to get sound bites out of us, or are you trying to talk no, to I'm us? No, I'm asking you a question. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Ask me again. Do you believe the American government, elements of it, were complicit in slaughtering innocent civilians on 9-11? I do. I believe because of the, the things that they missed, the, uh, the warnings that they had, the, uh, the information that they had available to them, what they knew was going to happen, the amount of other foreign governments that told us that the attacks were going to take place and we did nothing to stop it, Yes, that's, com that's criminally complicit. The fact, the fact that Bush sat in the school for a half hour when he should have been immediately escorted out of that school. The Secret Service's job is to protect the president at all costs. When Andrew Card leaned in and said whatever he said to President Bush, he should have been immediately escorted out of that school to make some kind of decision. He was allowed to sit there for a half hour and do nothing while innocent people died. You tell me whether or not they allowed people to be slaughtered. If what you say is true, that there was some kind of a conspiracy, how many people do you think would have had to have been involved in that conspiracy? You know, you just want us to sit here and speculate. No, We're not going to do it. No, no, you're right. asking I'm us curious. to speculate. That's a loaded question that we get all the time, so you can go back and say... Let me, if, go ahead. Let me, let, let, me, let, me, let me ask the question. If you're suggesting that... There's the no US, way of knowing. If you're suggesting that the U.S. government was somehow complicit, 
don't you think a lot of people would have had to have been in on that secret? Not a lot of people, no. And, really? and, and absolutely. War games take place all the time. Soldiers um, within the military, um, you know, other uh, private corporations do war games all the time. They are people behind a computer operating things and interjecting blips, removing blips from radar, making things happen so that, you know, that it's a war game. And to them, they think it's just part of an exercise. But it can be easily real life situation. I mean, people pilot predator drones all the time and things can be easily, you know, done without someone actually knowing that they're actually taking place in it. And if so many people were involved, wouldn't somebody come out and say something, right? That's your next question. I mean, we can give you the list of how many government officials, FBI agents, CIA agents, uh, you know, former Congresswoman Cynthia McKinney, uh, you know, there is a, a laundry list, hundreds and thousands of names long of government officials, politicians, uh, inside, you know, the intelligence agencies that have come out and said the numerous issues that are up with 9-11. And you want us to focus on, did the government do it or, you know, are... There's you know, an FBI whistleblower here right now if you want to interview her. I mean, if oh, you're... No, we, we plan on, on interviewing Good. her, but I mean, the question is, if people would have had to have been in on the conspiracy, don't you think by now someone would have acknowledged it? Don't you think that if later? don't you think if you took part in the murder of 3,000 people, you wouldn't want to get on TV and admit it? You're telling me you, Chris, the producer at ABC News, if you helped slaughter 3,000 innocent people and lead to two illegal wars, would you get up on ABC News and tell the American people and be followed, harassed, and probably killed? Well, I've worked in Washington for a long time, and one thing I learned in Washington is that there aren't too many secrets in Washington. And if there are, they don't last very long. Washington leaks like a sieve. You ever heard of the Manhattan Project? Oh, yeah. So you know that Harry Truman didn't even learn about it until he took office? So, um... Do you know that? <laughs> Do you know that Harry Truman didn't know well, about I'm the Manhattan... I'm not going to debate the Manhattan Project. Well, you, you want to debate right? about whether or not secrecy is possible in the government, and I think no, I just, just proved it to I, you. I'm just trying to get your, your view. And again, our views, our, our views aren't important. We're just two guys that made a movie, and our, you know, and our views are clearly put forward in our movie. And I mean, and, and we don't want, you know, we want to pigeonhole us down into did the government do it or not. 9-11 is so huge. There's so many aspects to 9-11, you know, on every single level that we're just two guys that made a movie, never intending it for it to do what it did. And we've been trying to deal with it and do the best that we can. There's people here that you should be interviewing. There's CIA agents, there's the FBI whistleblower, Bob McElvain, the family member who actually is asking the question, who is putting forward the information that he feels that is important and that needs to be investigated. Not to mention the first responders and the people that are here that were there that day, that were on the ground, that saw what they said they saw and have come out and, and given their testimony time and time and time again. We're just two guys that took that information and collected it into a digestible piece of video edited information. There's, and it's only because of all of these people's work that we've ever gotten any credibility at all. And we shouldn't get any credibility. I'm just going through college now. That's another question. Are you prepared to admit that you might be wrong? That in, Absolutely. In fact, we've been wrong before. There may have been uh, hijackers. We didn't say there weren't hijackers. Of course there was hijackers. Of course they were. They're clearly you there on the video. In our mouth. And you can't say that we believe things that we didn't say we believe. It's that simple. No, I'm, I'm asking you, are you prepared? We've been prepared since day, we've been prepared wrong. since day one. But you know what happens is ABC News comes and interviews us and then goes and attacks us instead of actually going and I don't know maybe trying to get some accountability for the events. It's easier for you guys to interview the two young filmmakers and attack them, call them names, put words in their mouth, and extract sound bites from them than to actually go and try to investigate the attacks. And so we just keep fighting back and forth with the media. You just keep calling us names and we keep going. Uh, why aren't you going and interviewing actual people that could lead to a new investigation? Why is it easier to interview us and to demonize us than to actually try and get your job done? Well, <laughs> a lot of journalists have done that, and a lot of organizations have reported it. As you know, uh, your, the assertions you make were sort of disputed point by point by popular mechanics. No, they weren't. They picked seven claims that they said the whole movement makes, and they painted them with a brush and said, that's it, case closed. They Not found it. Stephen Jones, who is a professor at MIT, I'm sure you know who he is, has found nanothermite in, in the dust from seven different independent samples. And that, pr and that proves what? That proves that, that proves there was explosives, there explosives at the World Trade the Center. That, that's exactly what it proves. So when somebody is ready to explain to us how nanothermite is in the rubble of the World Trade Center, I'd love to hear it. And again, you say, I don't like doing this. I'm a veteran of this country. I've served and I've watched my brothers die for this. I don't want to know that the United States government had anything to do 
with 9-11. I don't want to believe that. But, you but, do. but yes, of course I do, because the evidence points to that direction. The evidence points that they had their hands in on the hijackers.